All right, guys, uh, this was initially going to be a video reviewing these cow lights, or as people call them, ditch lights from wish.com. But as I got into the actual bracketry, I realized that this video needed to be more about the installation of the cow lights. So I purchased these brackets, they come apart, off of Amazon, surfed around the internet, found 30 or 40 different manufacturers selling these exact identical brackets, and I only found about two or three different styles of mounting brackets for the cow lights on the FJ. What I didn't realize is that these are going to take a lot of modification and we'll go over that here in just a minute all right so first you're going to want to pop this off and it's good to use a plastic tool or something like that you can get your basic pry bars at harbor freight and you just pop underneath here you want to pry right here and that comes right off these clips here that go into here and these clips, which I left one fell left in there, they go right here. And as you can see, they're going to mount to these two bolts here that are on the hood. So you have to unbolt the hood, make sure it doesn't shift, and make sure you do this one at a time because you don't want to have to spend a good amount of time realigning your hood. They're going to sit right here and here. Now the issue is, the issue is right here. This isn't even mounted all the way down, and it's already hitting. So, we're going to have to modify the bracket right here to miss this. And you don't want to cut this, this is what is part of your cowl, and that piece that clips right in here actually keeps this cowl down. So if you cut this, you're going to weaken the structure of this piece here. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove the two bolts holding the hood. Should be fairly straightforward. Just be careful of hitting the glass with your wrench or hitting your A-pillar. And we'll go ahead and put that in there. And you can see it does not sit flat. And I was thinking maybe I was installing it backwards that doesn't work. The other bracket, that doesn't work. You'd never be able to open your hood. And that one, the only way you could get that to work is if you actually cut the cowl itself. So that will not be an option. So what we'll need to do is we're going to need to cut about a quarter inch. Let's see if I can get a better view of that. Maybe a quarter inch out of right here. So we'll need to cut right here and right here. Uh, just small square out. I think I think that should be good.
All right. So now that fits perfectly in there. It is just flush. I wanted to take out as little as possible. And you can actually see how much I had to take out, which now makes this part of it extremely weak right here. So let's see if we can bolt it down at least and put the cowl back on. But with the shortness of these screws, the thickness, added thickness of the bracket, it makes mounting this a little more difficult. Um, as the longer you keep the hood unbolted, the more it shifts up and makes it almost impossible for you to bolt these factory bolts back down. Right. It is in. Let me make sure the hood still lines up and opens with no problem. Ooh, that's close. All right, now let's see if this will fit back on there. Granted that now we have this extra thickness right here. Go with the bottom first. Is supposed to slide on right there so and it does fit however there is a gap of about there's a gap of about a half an inch of where it's too short So I took about a half an inch off of that. Which means if we raise this up a half inch, we might not have that issue. But at the same time, we won't have enough bolt. So what we really need is this bolt, but three quarters of an inch longer, and then we will need some spacers as well to bring this up to about here. Let's see, do I have a spacer? So I have these little spacers here I'm just going to use to shim this up temporarily, not going to bolt it down. As you can see, that's where the plate was hitting, now it's a little higher. And Then we put this back on. Now that we're a little taller, it still doesn't give me enough reach. Alright, so that is. So now it is not even at the right angle anymore because now this hits here. Yeah, so now we got this hitting here right here if we move that up. But to get this to mount perfect. So for this to be a perfect flush mount on the back, that way you don't see it from the front, it would need to sit just like that. And as you can see, it gets all up in that. 
so just bent that out of the way I probably shouldn't have but it it fits perfectly so then Try this again. So, that there. That's there. Right there. Now that is a much better fit. All right, guys. After uh, much measurement modifications uh, testing found that this bracket is actually a quarter inch too short so to compensate for that I found some quarter inch nuts laying around I think I think these were half inch something like that uh, I don't know I have a whole bunch of different nuts and bolts laying around but I'm gonna use those as the spacers and we'll uh, see how that goes now the factory bolts have these little shoulders on them. I don't know if you can see that very well. That kind of helps center the hood. Make sure there's no flopping the adjustment. It also acts to tighten everything down uh, so it's almost like its own lock washer. So, because we're getting rid of those bolts and using these that we got at the auto parts store, which are quite a bit longer. As you can see, we're going to use a lock nut I and mean a lock washer on it to keep it in place. So let's throw this in there. All right, that's down. I think I'll probably put some washers on those. Uh, but let's see. That's how she fits. As you can see, we got some good old junkyard numbers. Clips don't want to really cooperate. Let's see. I'm kind of glad that gap is there. Because when we tighten this down, it'll drop. And as you can see, massive gap from the hood. So now we can actually put the light on. There we go. Not very clean. I don't like how this sits lower. Right there. It needs to kind of fit more that way. I bet I could probably bend the bracket over, get that to fit. Yeah. to the other side which has the snorkel all right ladies and gents if you watched the first half of the video you saw that I struggled like crazy to kind of figure out how this bracket tree would work so I'm going to go through step by step uh, everything you need to do to do the other side and uh, without any of the BS so step one remove the hood shocks and now there's just little metal clips up in the top and we just pop those clips little flat blade screwdriver if at all possible don't completely remove them because they're a pain to get back in we just loosen them up a little bit just enough and then pull and pop the 
clip back in, we'll lay the shock down. Now we do this because when you take the hood brackets off, these shocks can push the hood forward and make it almost impossible for you to align the hood properly when you go to put the bolts back in. Just loosen that up until we can pull it off. back in, down, and then we'll just lower the hood right back down. All right, so first we'll unscrew the antenna and then pull up on this. You might need to get something plastic. You can see the scratch here where the windshield guys scratched the paint trying to do this, but you just take a little bit of plastic, slide it right underneath there, grab it and peel up, and then just wiggle the whole thing up walk it back and forth in theory it should just pop right back out don't worry it won't break just pull it on as hard as you can there you go that's all that is and then that leaves you with some space to work most people would say to remove the snorkel to get in there, I'm gonna try and do it without. Um, I'm gonna grab right here at the top, start in the middle here. Pry up. There we go. And then, get over here. There. And there. And there we go. So you can see I lost both clips. They're still in there. And those are still good. Those look like they broke. Um, I would definitely recommend getting new ones of these before starting this project because they will break. Um, I'm pretty sure mine was previously broken from the windshield guys, but we won't go there. Next, we'll need a 12 millimeter wrench to take these two bolts off. And like I said before, uh, it is a lot easier once you take those hood shocks off. There's no more, in, uh, more pressure on these bolts. Make sure they put this hose out of the way and it's still sitting here. That is a drain hose. All right, so this will sit here and as you can see doesn't quite fit just like on the other side so we'll need some spacers all right guys since these things aren't machined properly we'll need a few extra things first like I use you can use anything but I used some standard nuts um, I'm not quite sure of what size they are. They're, I know they're standard, not metric, but they're a half inch thick. That's really all that matters is they're a half inch thick. And you'll need some eight millimeter washers. Uh, you'll need some eight millimeter lock washers. And you'll need some eight millimeter see that 8 millimeter by 1.25 by 30 millimeters bolts you'll need four of all of these two for one side two for the other now as you can tell there is hitting right there also this will hit when you open the hood. So we're gonna have to shave both of those. Uh, let me go shave those and I'll be right back. All right guys, so what you're gonna need to do is modify this bracket. This is the hard part. So the bracket sits right here and it will hit this part here and also this right here when you open the hood. 
So it's not hitting now, but when you open the hood, it will. Uh, some people say, oh, just cut that off, but that's the hood stop to prevent the hood from opening too far. So you don't want to get rid of that. Unless you want your hood to go to your windshield, but that's on you. Uh, so first, cut a little relief. I don't know if you can see that. There we go, a little relief. I did mine with a cutoff wheel, so it's not the prettiest thing in the world. And that is for the hood to miss. And then also cut this piece off right here, just straight across the bottom. Straight up, straight across, so that it will fit right there. And then you want these nuts here. You want to put that over top like so. All right, so you want to take your new bolt, lock washer, washer, and then go through the bracket, through the nut spacer, and through the hood, and into the car. Then we're going to do the other side. Same thing, bolt, washer, or lock washer, then washer. Also, make sure all your parts that are using are stainless steel. This is an off-road vehicle. This vehicle get, will get wet, and you will want to make sure that it doesn't rust. Also, once you've made sure everything test fits, paint this bracket. You don't want to leave any um, unpainted areas because it will rust. So those areas that you just cut, make sure you paint them. So we get that good and tight. Make sure everything fits. And then let's see if our hood misses. Let's see if we cut enough off. Since we took those shocks off, the hood is much heavier. It looks like we might have some flex. Let me put the shocks back on. Alright, shocks back on. Woo! Just a little bit of flex, which we can fix by loosening this up. And moving it ever so slightly over. There we go. Well, that moved over just a little bit more. Perfect. Just misses it. Excellent. If this right here uh, is not flat enough against here for your panel to fit, you can bend this up, down, left, right. It's all up to you. Um, and at the end of the day, you're modifying this for your vehicle, so basically just be comfortable with how you want it. All right, now time to test to see if this fits. This is the worst part because of the snorkel. I'm trying to get everything in there, make sure nothing rubs. This tab will run into this right here. So we'll just take it, get the bend started with the pliers, like so. And then you should be able to push it down the rest of the way with your hand. If not, you can tap it with a hammer. You only need to go down halfway. All right, now we should be cooking with gas. There we go. It does not fit quite well because my brackets are, my bushings are broken. But this right here will hold it down tremendously. Uh, once we put the actual light on there, it'll push all this down. So for the most part, there you're done. What I'll probably end up doing is tomorrow going to my local Toyota dealership, ordering all the clips I need for this piece here so they're not all 
weird. Not all of them, so they're all tightened down properly. There we go. And tighten that down. There we go. That keeps that kind of down. And then we'll take the boot for the antenna. And we'll wedge that back on there, like so. And then your antenna will just easily screw on just like that. And there we go. We got our lights installed. Not the best, but you know, they'll do for now.